X-Men Black is a brand new miniseries that seeks to shine the spotlight on some of your favorite X-Men bad guys while also weaving a tale about Apocalypse that will ultimately lead into the new Uncanny series. What'll happen next? Well, let's hop into X-Men Black Magneto issue number one and find out for ourselves, shall we? Alrighty then, so as we join the comic, we're in the American heartland. Eric Lencher, the master of magnetism, is seemingly passing on through when he makes friends with a young girl named Kate, a waitress at her family's restaurant. Kate Kate is positive and full of life, and it really strikes a chord with Eric. It reminds him a lot of the other Kates he's known in his life, and even his dearly departed daughter. Not to be confused with his two other daughters who are alive. They're not near as dear, don't you know? It seems that Kate lost her mother at a young age. She was a soldier who went away on what was supposed to be her final deployment and never made it back. Kate's mom had hoped that she could parlay her military career into being an astronaut, and it's something that Kate still very much dreams about. Hey, you know, Magneto's been to space lots of time. You Usually it ends with people trying to kill him, but he got a super cool asteroid base out of the deal. Now on the news, we hear about the One organization, basically the new super spy paramilitary group that's been stepping in to try and pick up the slack after S.H.I.E.L.D.'s disbandment. What's their raison d'etre today? Well, apparently it seems cracking down on the mutant population in accordance with new laws passed. Laws that allow One to separate mutant children from their parents and hold them indefinitely without a trial at a prison facility. Why, yes, they are indeed referencing what you think they're referencing. The good old boys at the restaurant hoot and holler and shout their support for this endeavor. After all, they're a bunch of muties. They're not even human, right? Magneto greatly disagrees with this sentiment on several levels, and he even shows the good old boys his Holocaust tattoo, saying that they better learn some history and quick ask him about detention facilities. Ask your Native American friends about detention facilities. Heck, ask your Japanese friends about detention facilities and see what they have to tell you. Obviously, the good old boys blow blow Magneto off, calling him a muty lover, and saying, hey, World War II was like a hundred years ago, man. It has no bearing on my life today. Also, hey, for a guy who was around in World War II, you look pretty good and spry. I guess it's your good genes, huh? Magneto steals his resolve, not wanting to murder all of those people in front of Kate, the girl who was nice to him, but he does end up revealing his powers and his mutant nature to her before he leaves. As we soon discover, Magneto actually lied to Kate about just passing through. He was well aware of the mutant camps, and he and the the rest of his mutant revolutionaries had made plans to liberate the mutants inside. Magneto had planned to simply just walk on into the facility and kill anyone who got in his way, although all of this new stuff with children is starting to make him question his own actions. After all, back when he started as a supervillain, when he was fighting the X-Men, they were basically kids. He didn't pull any punches. Heck, he was directly responsible for the death of a few. By the time Magneto shows up at the gates of the camp, they're ready for him. They have brand new sentinels ready to do some mutant fighting. And while on a normal day, one sentinel wouldn't be much trouble for Magneto, this is not a good day for Eric. He's really starting to feel his age. He's slowing down. He wonders how much longer his body can take all these big epic clashes, even if his powers are just as strong as they've ever been. Worse still, once the sentinel is defeated comes the human guards, one of which actually manages to get the drop on Magneto. She could have killed him too if she was just a second faster. Once again, this situation making Magneto feel very human and very mortal. Magneto rescues the imprisoned children and he gives them the classic brotherhood speech. Come join me on the dark side. Why spend your life trying to fit in with people who hate and fear you? Come with me and we will make our own destiny. Join my mutant revolution. And all that jazz. Some of the kids buy him hook, line, and sinker, but some of the other kids are different. They have their own ideas. They view running away and joining Magneto's circus as basically giving up on their country and their home. Yeah, things are bad now. In fact, they're horrible, but they won't get better if they just pull up stakes and run away of anything they need to dig in their feet and fight even harder. Once again, the candidness of these young people throw Magneto for a loop and cause him to think and challenge ideals that he's held so strongly for so very long. Before Magneto leaves town forever, he's sure to give Kate his finished drawing of the two of them together in space. He says he hopes their paths cross again and that when they do meet, it will be in the stars. Now that's where the main story ends, but as I mentioned before, there's also an apocalypse backup. Basically, we see in Sabanur using celestial technology 
technology to try and recreate a newer, better body for himself. It all ends up horribly backfiring on him, as science fiction of this nature tends to do. He gets himself thrown into an alternate dimension where he discovers his powers don't work anymore, but moreover than that, he seems to slowly but surely becoming human. And so that was X-Men Black Magneto issue number one, everyone, and overall I thought it was a really strong little character piece for Eric Lencher and prove positive that Chris Claremont can still bring it as a writer. It's also a wonderfully topical and timely story, something the X-Men have always excelled at, regardless of what era of comics they're in. It looked great, and as for what this story could mean for the greater X-Men line of books, I find it funny that Mr. X, or the newly resurrected Xavier, is becoming more of a cynical dick where it looks like Magneto is actually becoming more idealistic. It might be fun to see them fully, completely switch roles if that's where they want to take it. Overall, I feel comfortable giving this one a very strong 8.5 out of 10. I really, really enjoyed it. Hey there everyone, it's your old pal Cape Joel again. I want to thank you so much for watching to the end of the video. I hope you enjoyed it, and if you did, why not take a look at some of these other videos I have available from the channel. Then you can follow me on Twitter and Facebook at Cape Joel, so you're always up to date on what I'm doing next. And hey, if you're in the market for some cheap comic books, might I recommend Book Depository? They're my favorite place to get cheap comic book trades, and if you use my link down in the description, not only will you save a bundle by not having to pay a cent for shipping, but everything you do buy goes to support me in the channel. So you win, I win, everybody wins, right? And until next time everyone, this has been Cape Joel, and I'm going to continue making comic book videos that smack of greatness. Bye bye